damn it, how long have we been doing this show? The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life, it's episode 385, we're into the second full week of September of 2024, I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we can't talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. I think we're already off to a better start than last week because I haven't had a coughing fit yet. Good. How you doing, pal? Well, you know, I've, uh, you know, I'm, I'm out here, and it's, uh, I think things are going well, uh, relatively speaking. Uh, the, the only two sports franchises I truly t- uh, care about. Uh, the Ravens lost last week. The Orioles are bad, but so is everyone else in the major, le- in the major leagues. So you know, things could be better, but they could also be worse. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure, for sure. Have some, uh, maybe some bonus sports talk uh, after the show <laughs> if, uh, for the for our favorite listener. All right, uh, we have an AEW pay per view to recap. We have a WWE Raw with Bret Hart and to talk about, and a SmackDown premiere on USA Network, and all kinds of things. Let's start with uh, all out. It was an AEW pay-per-view that took place this past weekend. And uh, what did you think of the show? Um, <laughs> I thought it was good. I would say I was a bit underwhelmed um, as far well, as the in-ring action on the show. They're always too long, right? We say this every week. It's not It's not changing. 12, so, 12 I, matches. Right. Four hours. It had been a very long day for me on uh, on a personal level and nothing bad. Just I had helped friends move all day and I was exhausted. No, forget that. Um, and uh, it, this was illustrated by me uh, falling asleep during the main event and then becoming extremely frustrated the next morning because the Bleacher Report app keeps uh, kept uh, crashing when I tried to fast forward to watch the main event so anyway uh but that's i mean look the shows are gonna go to midnight especially if it's you know it was look at least it was on a saturday and not a sunday night going that late because non-holiday weekend aew shows for the pay-per-views on a sunday night are brutal mm-hmm. uh for me especially so not for me especially just for me <laughs> for me they are bad I'm, they're not especially brutal for me you're mostly concerned with yourself that's correct fine. the protagonist of reality um yes. yeah so its length was was a uh, was the same as it they always are and yeah i would say outside of pack and osprey i don't really think anything delivered or over delivered in the ring and if anything i was maybe let down maybe too strong a word, but I was just, like I said, a little bit underwhelmed by a lot of the in-ring action on this show, which when the best thing you have going for you as a company is the in-ring action, uh, kind of leaves you with uh, feeling a little bit overwhelmed, uh, a little bit underwhelmed when, when the show's over. This was a weird show. Uh, MJF beat Daniel Garcia. But apparently the word coming out of the show was that Daniel Garcia has not re-signed mm-hmm. and MJF is off to make a movie. So they had MJF beat Garcia, <laughs> even though this whole feud has been about elevating Danny Garcia. And uh, but then uh, it, they did a like a second rope pile driver with Garcia to MJF because MJF's going to go shoot a movie or something. And so there you go. This is an old uh, nobody gets over, nobody wins special. Just weird. Yeah. So, well, it's funny is my understanding uh, was that the whole original reason that they did that angle where MJF killed Danny was because that was to write him off if he was not coming back. Right. I remember that. Yeah. Instead, he did come back and they booked a whole, you know, a big pay-per-view match around him. And no, he did not get the one. You know, MJF got a flash pin and then got his ass kicked after the match anyway. So it's like, it's not like you, I, I guess, like you said, that's hedging your bets in case he at the 11th hour decides he's, he's heading up north. But 
Um, why, why is this a, a surprise though? <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> like how about you have the guy sign? If that's the reason, then just have the guy sign before you book him in a pay per view match. Like, what are we yeah. doing? Or if your idea is, this reminds me a little bit of uh, when Kyle O'Reilly and Adam Cole were both about to leave Ring of Honor. Okay. But they had told the story. And I think Kyle's deal was up first. Okay. So they had told the, the story, had like the whole fall and winter had been leading up to Kyle winning the title, but he was leaving. So right. Ring of what Ring of Honor did, which I think in retrospect was the right thing, is because they had built like the whole last six months of the television around it, they paid it off and Kyle won the belt. And then he just dropped it back to Adam like three weeks later at Wrestle Kingdom. Remember that the, the token ROH title match on Wrestle Kingdom in yeah. years gone by? Classic. Barely. But, but the philosophy being, look, we built up to the baby face getting his revenge and winning the belt. And even though, even if it's only a quick reign, we have to pay off that moment. So right. like, since Danny, you wanted to give that payoff and you, you're, you were going to have Danny stand tall anyway. Why not just have him beat MJF? What's the difference between beating a guy and or like, like okay, MJF rolled him up and got the three and then got laid out and stretchered out. It's like, I, I don't know. It, I just I just feel like we overthought this. So like if you if your idea was, look, we need to give a payoff because we've built this up, whether he stays or not. I'm fine with that. If you want to reward your fans, uh, fine. Because I, unless his deal was up Sunday, you could still then have somebody else beat him in a match in the next two weeks. So he doesn't go off your TV, having just beat one of your biggest stars without doing something on the way out. Though it wouldn't be the first time. Um, <laughs> so, so I feel like, yeah, I feel like we just really, we really overthought this we really galaxy brained ourselves with this one. That's known to happen from time to time in this promotion. That's fine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, are the Young Bucks washed? The Young Bucks beat <laughs> Claudio, or do they just not care? The Young Bucks beat uh, Claudio and Wheeler to retain the tag team titles. This is starting together at the last minute anyway. And, uh, you know, they didn't get a ton of time for a Young Bucks match. They got like 15, 16 minutes and um, just didn't do anything for me. What do you think? Yeah, it was just it just felt stale. And I don't know how much of that is the Bucks not trying hard or not being as good. How much of it is just the crowd is not particularly into the whatever it is they're whatever this presentation they're, of they're them. doing. Right. It's like because they were they were heels before and were still having great matches and we're still getting a lot of heat as heels. Uh, and now they're heels again, but they're dressing in they're wrestling in slacks and whatever it is. It does not feel like the crowd's particularly enthralled, but they're also the tag champions. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I it, the jury's still out on officially declaring them washed, but I think the needle is ticking over to washed. It's interesting. Will Osprey versus Pack every. Fiber of my being was to say Pac. Will <laughs> Osprey beat Pac uh, to keep the international championship? Um, the BCC guys just taking taking L's up and down the show because they were going to get their heat back later. Mm-hmm. Uh, Statlander beat Willow in a Chicago street fight. Um, if you take away the Bass Ackwards booking of the uh, heel beating the baby face clean, tapping the baby face out clean in a street fight. Um, I thought this was great. Yeah, I mean, it's what did you think of it? Yeah, it's a it's among the better <laughs> hardcore matches involving ladies that I can remember seeing. Um, a no, a lot of caveats. <laughs> yeah, it was good. I liked it. I I don't know. I didn't I didn't feel the need to immediately declare it like the best women's match of the year or anything or the oh, best. sure yeah. but it was good it was good they did some really creative stuff uh much to i think a certain percentage of the audience's chagrin some text to the hoo-ha yes um don't need to see that <laughs> uh i think they mostly went in her thighs if it's <laughs> yeah but you that the, 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 the implication was there yeah um yeah. and yeah and then they just 
went went hog wild. They you know took every crazy bump and barbed wire and tacks and blood and and light tubes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was uh, it was fun. It was a really fun, wild, out of control match. I think it's like it's going to get lost in the shuffle because of the more overt and ridiculous violence at the end of the show. But yeah, it was uh, it was very good. Okada's a heel, and uh, he kept the four the uh, Continental Championship in a four way over Briscoe, Cassidy, and Takeshita. Uh, Okada and Takeshita is the money here. That's what they're building to. That's interesting. Um, but uh, as a match, uh, just kind of there. What did you think of it? Yeah, uh, Mark Briscoe worked really hard. Probably the hardest of anybody in this match. Um, he might be a top five worker in the world he's so good he's he's one of those guys that can just will something he can will you to care yes uh and it works so yes. yeah i i i was impressed by mark i was not uh, overly impressed by the rest of the match it was it was fine nobody thought okada was gonna lose this belt in a random four way so i don't think the crowd was super into it but it was it was fun and had its moments mercedes Monet beat hikaru shida this might shock you, but I have some thoughts about this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I um thought during the match, you know, Mercedes should just probably go ahead and put Sheeta over. She needs a, a credible opponent. She needs a rival. Mm-hmm. Britt Baker's disappeared from TV since <laughs> losing at All In. Um, we should probably heat somebody up here for for Mercedes to wrestle. Anyway, they went, uh, Wikipedia says they went 16 minutes and 30 seconds. And that seems plausible. The fifth, I would say they had a good, not great, good 15 minutes of the match. And then they just kind of did some stuff leading to the finish, including like a botched, is the baby face going to use a weapon and get herself disqualified mm-hmm. spot that didn't make a whole lot of sense. Anyway, I thought this was good for 15 minutes and then the last 90 seconds or so, it just kind of existed. Do you have thoughts about this match? Yeah, did, there was a kick that I thought Mercedes might have gotten like knocked a little loopy on. Plausible. Um, there's one kick that like really connected. Maybe she was just selling it really well. But I thought there was like this, like I thought some of the mat work they did was really good at the start of the match. I thought it, it was going along pretty well and then yeah, I, I, I'd have to watch it again to, fear, to figure out where I felt like it started to, to fall down. Maybe it was just in those last two minutes, and I just remember it more because it was the finish. Right. But um, yeah, I, yeah, I don't think it was awful, but it was not uh, it was not particularly memorable either. And uh, that's kind of wild because uh, both of these women are are historically very good wrestlers. But um, yeah, I I thought. At the end, I think again, it plays into. I don't think anyone thought Sheeta was winning here. So even if, even if there are reasons that maybe she should have, yeah. um, so I think the crowd was just kind of politely waiting for the match to be over because they felt like they knew what was going to happen. Yeah, Brian Danielson defeated Jack Perry to retain the AEW World Championship, and then his friends destroyed him afterwards. <laughs> um, I guess Pac. Pac has been caucusing with the Blackpool Combat Club and um, Pac and Claudio and Moxley and Marina Shafir turned on Danielson after the match and then Pac like lightly held Wheeler in the corner and uh, Wheeler you just such a zero. <laughs> He's an absolute zero. Nerd, There's not huh? <laughs> oh, that's the worst performance you've ever seen. <laughs> It's like his best friend is getting the S kicked out of him. And he's not even trying to break it up. He's like, I don't know. It was. I thought we were you to ruin this angle. But uh, but anyway, long match with Danielson and Perry. Good match, but uh, outcome never in doubt. And then uh, John Moxley suffocated Brian Danielson with a plastic bag (laughs) after the match. You know, as you do. They're doing all these things that Eddie Kingston asked to do two years ago that uh, he was told no. I'm sure he's livid. Yes. <laughs> but uh, look, it was effective as, as an angle goes, Wheeler notwithstanding. Um, well, we can talk about the Dynamite follow-up in a minute here. 
Sure. Uh, it you do need to, I think, and they, to my knowledge, did not even attempt to explain why Wheeler. Like, okay, if the idea is Wheeler's not not with this idea, they he didn't know it was coming, and then he tries to intervene. Like, they should have beat his ass. <laughs> Yes. Like he shouldn't have just stood there and watched it happen. He should have like, like, and if the idea is he's conflicted and he doesn't know, but he didn't seem to be conflicted because he runs to Danielson's side while everybody else leaves. Right. So like, it doesn't seem like he's conflicted. It seems like he's very upset with them unless this is a big swerve, but what's the point of that? Like, like this is, this is all complicated too, by the fact that Pac, Claudio and wheel are, are the trios champions together. Correct. <laughs> So you got to figure out what you're what you're going to do with that as well. So right. it seems like it would have just been easier for either Wheeler to join with them, or maybe more accurately for them to not have won the trios belts, or or he could run away if you want to right. delay the delay whatever the payoff is, whether it's him joining the bad right. guys or staying good, whatever. Right. You could even have it where like they come through the crowd and kill danielson and then he come he comes running out from the back like raising his arms like what's going on what like i didn't know this was happening right and then they and then they clear out before he you know before he gets to the ring or something like there's a million things you could have done besides him coming out with those guys and then impotently standing there (laughs) while uh his his one of his three dads got suffocated by his other one of his other three dads (laughs) there was a legitimate murder (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. Happening in the ring. Yeah. All right. Uh, Hangman Page beat Swerve Strickland. Uh, via hypodermic. Via, via murder. There's so much murder on this show. You don't think about that. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a chair shot to the head here, too. They think this is like when a WWE had the COVID spray. You remember that? <laughs> and they're like, it, it punctures the virus. And. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> AEW has gimmick chair shots to the head. They're like, we have figured out how to gimmick chairs so that when you hit someone in the head with it, it's okay. It's mm-hmm. like, you're still whacking somebody in the head as hard as you can. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's... Right. It's like the tricks are the same trick, quote unquote, tricks that they've been since the 90s, right? It's like, oh, we sand down the metal. It's like hitting him with a cookie sheet or something it's like right yeah but that's still metal like it's still not it's still not an object that is meant to be swung really hard at the top of your brain you know right yeah it's bad um there were hypodermic needles in this a cinder block Mm -hmm. um a (laughs) stake there was attempted stake to the heart spots um Hangman and Swerve had my favorite match of last year and what I thought was the best match of last year. I thought this was um, lacking and some of it is I think the cage hurt them because they couldn't move around and Mm. uh, I thought the stipulation hurt the match rather than help it and also it was uh, you know 30 plus minutes at the end of a five and a half hour show. So uh, this didn't do anything for me. I thought it made Swerve, it weakened Swerve, but maybe people don't share that. Anyway, I would love to hear your thoughts on the Lights Out Steel Cage match. Um, I agree that this was nowhere near the level of their last crazy hardcore match. Um, I can appreciate them trying to do a different sort of thing, but yeah, it felt like a lot of you do you do a move or you hit a weapon shot or you drag the guy across the 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 cage or the barbed wire or whatever and then we stand around for for about a minute and then we do our next spot and the other guy takes over or whatever it felt like a lot of that i think the last five or so minutes were really intense and compelling um but that was the last five minutes of a 30 minute match so i would have yeah maybe maybe cut out the first third of this match and you just it's okay to have like a really intense short sprint. I don't think that's like not even a sprint, a a medium pace is <laughs> <It's> okay <laughs> in a pay-per-view main event. Um 
So I, uh, I, I, I would have preferred it to be a little bit shorter. And again, not just because I was literally dozing <laughs> off in my chair when watching it live. Um, but yeah, it's just like the, the slow plotting nature of the first, you know, 18 minutes of this were, were, were not for me. I think they really ratcheted up the intensity. It felt like two guys that really hated each other by the end again, um, so there's definitely moments like there are moments that'll be replayed in video packages and, and stuff for the rest of the time this company exists. So like, you know, after the show's over, it becomes almost instantly a, a legendary thing just because of the memorable moments. But those memorable moments were all in like the last eight minutes of the match. So um, yeah, I, I I didn't think this was nearly at the level of their match or even just like their regular wrestling matches that they've had before. Um, so like, uh, I don't know. How do you how do you top this? Swerve is also apparently going to be off for a while, which is why he he got uh, got destroyed so convincingly at the end. But um, yeah, I it's it certainly had its moments. It certainly had its memorable uh, visuals. It it did that. Uh, the follow up to this show was a really weird uh, mm-hmm. AEW Dynamite, which uh, featured a little bit of build to next week's show, but was more about setting up Dynamite Grand Slam uh, two weeks from uh, this past Wednesday, <laughs> and a lot of booking me doesn't make any sense. Agreed. Uh, um, so they have. Uh, John Moxley has been looking for Darby Allen for like three weeks, right? Mm-hmm. Or two weeks. So he uh, he calls out Darby Allen here and he says, look, uh, Brian Danielson, I murdered him. Uh, I, I suffocated him with a plastic bag. And uh, he's not going to be healthy in time to wrestle at, uh, at Grand Slam. Now, when they've done this in the past, they've done an interim championship. No interim championship here. Uh, maybe the injury isn't long enough. Who knows? Could be any number of a thousand things. Mm-hmm. So then Moxley goes, how about you put your Darby, you take your guaranteed world title shot that you're supposed to have at Grand Slam and you put it on the line against me. And Darby says, yes, I will absolutely do that. And then later in the show, Nigel McGuinness, everyone's favorite po- polyamorous magician, <laughs> commandeers the microphone and says, I went to Tony Khan and uh, Brian Danielson's been ducking me for years, uh, but Tony Khan's not afraid. Danielson's afraid of me. Tony Khan's not. Tony Khan's giving me a signed contract. I'm challenging Brian Danielson uh, for Dynamite Grand Slam. And then later in the show, with a big graphic with a big asterisk on it that says, if Brian is cleared to wrestle, they announced Brian Danielson versus Nigel McGuinness for AEW Dynamite Grand Slam. The show that Danielson was supposedly too dead to work on. And so Darby Allen is going to put his title shot up against John Moxley. And uh Danielson, if he's cleared, will wrestle Nigel McGinnis on that show. B- bizarre. And then Will Ospreay and Kyle Fletcher. Uh Osprey's back with the Don Callis family. I mean, I guess technically they never shot the bre- shot that breakup angle, so it's fine. But like he he's only associated with them in storyline when they need to. <laughs> And uh, Will Ospreay and Kyle Fletcher uh, are the new number one contenders to the tag team championships. So you get 20 tag teams, but two singles are the uh, the number one contenders to the tag titles. So a lot to cover there. Bizarre dynamite. Bizarre booking for Grand Slam. Any thoughts on all of this? Um. All right, let's start with uh, the Darby and Moxley wrestling for the title shot instead of Darby getting the title shot that he won like two months ago. Sounds good. Um, I I don't generally have a problem if the idea is the guy gets goaded into putting his shot up. That's I'm okay with that, even though Moxley hasn't done anything really to earn a world title shot, but that's fine. He, sure. got, he got goaded into it. He was challenged. He accepted the challenge. That's, you know, as old as pro wrestling. That's fine. Right. But the whole... I thought the whole reason, the whole implication was it's because Danielson's too hurt to wrestle. And so Darby would otherwise just not have a match on Grand Slam because Danielson's not cleared. Right. 
instead it's like yes he is going to have a match and as far as they've implied on tv he's going danielson is going to be on this show and he's going to be wrestling he's just going to wrestle a non-title match against Ni- nigel instead um which to me is is dumb because again the whole impetus i thought was well since danielson won't be around to to for you to get your title shot why don't you put it on the line against me um so I think that's dumb unless they're going unless, and I don't know, because it feels like they're running out of time. If, if in fact, Danielson is losing this title in Seattle in October, right? Like, unless this is the start of like Nigel is Jericho and, and Danielson is Goldberg. And he's going to like call him out for matches when he's not, when he knows he's not in the building and then declare himself the victor. Um, if that's what they're doing, I guess that's something you could do. <laughs> But I also don't think it's not really in AEW's practices to like announce a match and then not deliver it. Yes. Um, so I mean, when they put up the graphic saying it's not, he didn't say like, "I'm going to be at Arthur Ashe Stadium and I'm going to stand in that ring and I'm going to call out Danielson and if he has the balls, he'll show up and fight me." Like, no, it's like no, they're like he's going to have this match if he's healthy. So it's like eh, it feels like it feels like that's not what they're doing. So in that case, it just feels like for some reason, the number one contender could have just rest, had his title shot and theoretically won the title on this show. But instead, he's putting the title on the uh, his title shot on the line separately. And the world champion who was apparently too hurt to wrestle for the title is apparently going to have a non-title match. It's just it's just malarkey. It's bad. It's it doesn't make a lot of sense. And the way it was laid out did not make it make more sense to me. Um, like, so it's just like, it's, it's two things that in a, in a, in a bubble are fine, but do not work within the context of the show that they are on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, so Moxley and Utton Darby and uh, Danielson and McGinnis, it'll be 15 years to the uh, 15 years and one day since their last singles match if Danielson and McGinnis wrestle on September 25th. So I think they were trying to do some kind of 15-year kismet anniversary deal as close as they could could get to the to the uh to that to hitting that mark. So I don't know. I guess like I, I, that's f- again fine, but then you shouldn't have said that Darby was getting that title shot at <laughs> if you don't say that <laughs> he could have won me. Right, he could have had the title shot at Wrestle Dream, which mm-hmm. is October twelfth. It's only two weeks yeah. later. Yeah, seventeen yeah. days later. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. You, this is all. It's all fake, and you can do whatever you want, and you don't. <laughs> you don't have to do this. You just have to pay attention to the things you've said before when you say new things. Yeah, um, and it's like if you. What's the continuity guy doing? It's the guy <laughs> they hired for wrestling continuity or whatever. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, I would. I think that's a that's a great question. Um, <laughs> terrible. To borrow a Tony Connison. That's a great question. Um, <laughs> anyway. Any thoughts on Osprey and Fletcher as a tag team number one contender? I mean, I don't they... particularly. It doesn't bother me. I'm just no. I just think it's weird. They have sort of hemmed and hawed. They they try to acknowledge it. I guess. I don't remember exactly which show, but there's some show where Fletcher and I th- I guess Fletcher and uh, and Takeshita came down to like save Osprey from MJF one week or something. OK, after they had amicably parted ways. And so the whole start of the show is Don saying like, hey, you owe us a favor. I want the favor to be you teaming with Kyle, even though you're not technically in the group anymore. So I think this is this could be. Eventually, you fi- you figure they're going to do the Horseman beatdown. I've seen that uh, Powerhouse Hobbs seems to be on his way back, so it could be that this is where it happens. Takesha has obviously got other stuff, as you said. They're they're teasing him and Okada in a singles for somewhere down the line, so it doesn't seem like it would just be Takesha and Kyle turning on on him. But it, so I don't know. It could be could be coming at this show or it could be coming in six months. Who knows? <laughs> the important thing is that Don Callis will remain on this show, <laughs> despite there being no evidence that he is uh, improving the product in any way. Uh, anytime Don Callis is not on screen, one of the characters needs to be asking, 
Where is Don Callis? Whew. I mean, it's calmed down a little bit since he's not always with Osprey anymore. Because then, then it was like he'd yeah. be at the start of the show, the end of the show when Osprey wrestled, he'd be on commentary, and he'd be out there two other times for whatever Fletcher and Takeshita were doing. So, right, it's like it's down to like twice a week instead of <laughs> eight times and eight times a night. Right. Well, that's what's going on in AEW land. WWE wrapped up SmackDown on Fox this past week and uh, they thanked Fox and did like a half hearted video tribute to their five year run on Fox. Mm -hmm. And the big rumor this week is that a Fox property, whether it be Fox Sports One, Fox Sports Two, something is going to have a program called AEW Shockwave, a one hour wrestling show called AEW Shockwave on it. And um, I don't know what to make of this. Uh, I think people. I don't know. Uh, anyway, WWE did a thank you to Fox and then Fox may be okie doking them by giving a one hour show to not on Fox proper, but on one of their cable channels uh, to AEW. Interesting. Very interesting. Do you have any thoughts on uh, AEW Shockwave, a sixth hour? <laughs> Of AEW TV every week. Well, uh, it's not something that particularly lights my world on fire, but uh, you know, Ramp Rampage is a very easy to watch show. <laughs> you know, an hour long wrestling show is incredibly watchable most of the time. It's just there; it exists. Right. It's uh, if if like the current Rampages and Collisions and Ring of Honors of the world. If it's taped at like ten thirty eight p.m. on a on a Wednesday night after Dynamite and the crowds are dead, it won't be particularly exciting. But hey, um, generally speaking, it seems like a good idea from for AEW certainly to not put all your eggs in the Warner Brothers Discovery basket if possible. Sure. So hey, you're you're you've got if you get if you get somebody that wants to pay you to put a show on an hour a week, obviously you're not going to turn that down. It's the content era. So um, and yeah, I, I guess that's interesting that that WWE is not is leaving Fox and then AEW could be on there. Not again, not not the same thing at all, monetarily or you know prominence wise. But yeah, uh, I I can imagine that maybe Fox. He's like, yeah, having having wrestling is a it's a way to fill time, <laughs> and it has a built in audience that's pretty loyal. So, why not? Um, I see I see why everyone involved made those decisions. But uh, will anyone care about it two weeks after it's on the air? Probably not, because that's usually what happens with these, you know, with your superstars on on wgn or your uh main event on in television or it's like yeah yeah it's a new shiny toy for a couple of weeks and yeah you really gas it up the first couple of weeks and then by week four primo's wrestling zach Ryder, you know yeah for sure we could probably book that match actually if we if we wanted to. can we get carlos's boy <laughs> Car carlos i'm prepared to send you one of my very top superstars <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't. <laughs> Late stage Vince negotiating with Carlos Colon. <laughs> it's tremendous. We were talking this week when we were talking about polyamory and Nigel McGuinness. Uh -huh. uh, we were discussing what if Vince McMahon, what if Nigel didn't have uh, HEP and got signed 15 years ago? And then we were discussing... You know, the polyamory thing probably would have come out at some point mm -hmm. and someone would have had to explain poly, the polyamorous lifestyle to Vince McMahon to late stage Vince McMahon, <laughs> who then would have embraced it naturally. Yes. And like, I'm imagining a scenario where like Vince shows up with Candace Michelle and Victoria and Tori Wilson, at, like all on his arm and like Vin late stage Vince McMahon really embracing the, po <laughs> the polyamorous lifestyle. Thanks to uh, thanks to Nigel McGuinness, but it wasn't to be. Yeah, no, and uh, I mean maybe if he had, uh... <laughs> never mind. I'm not going to make light of actual. If, no, but <laughs> but, but there's it plenty been of there's plenty of 
effed up stuff you can do that's legal, you yes. know? <laughs> no, it is uh no, like you said, hey, if everyone <laughs> if everyone involved is on board for it, <laughs> it could have uh could have saved him some money, maybe. Unreal. Anyway, um late stage when took me in discovering the polyamorous lifestyle. That's that's a skit. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, so WWE SmackDown debuts on USA Network this Friday, and the show will kick off with the steel cage match with Cody Rhodes defending the undisputed WWE title against Solo Sokoa. Um, when they set this match up on last week's show, uh, this went over like a fart in church. <laughs> No one cares about Solo Sokoa <laughs> challenging for the world championship, but um, you know, whatever. It's they they announced Solo Sokoa versus Cody Rose in a steel cage match, and then the crowd was chanting for Roman Reigns because, of course, they are. <laughs> the guy's not around, he's the biggest star in the right. world. I mean, like, I don't think it's hurting the product or anything. Like, it's not like years ago when fans would hijack shows and just whatever this is a different right. audience this is a more passive audience but but roman not being there is not helping these shows and uh anyway so uh that that match kicks off the smackdown debut on usa network this week andrade and carmelo hayes will continue their best of 497 series <laughs> and kevin owens and a mystery partner will face uh eight town down under so WWE debuting on USA or uh, SmackDown debuting on USA, re debuting on USA this weekend. And they also announced this week that Raw will be two hours from October to December on USA, which is interesting. USA is paying a reduced rate for those three months of Raw and WWE. So is going to give them a reduced product and a lot of word that uh coming out this week that WWE may experiment when they get to when Raw gets to Netflix in January that they may experiment with the lengths of show times and mm. whether guess... that anyway any thoughts on any of this um we'll start with the last thing you said with the uh, the show time I guess I mean this maybe unless it's specifically said in whatever their agreement with Netflix is, which I'm sure it's very specific. Right. If they don't have to say you have to go exactly three hours every week, then maybe some weeks Raw is two hours and forty five minutes. Maybe some weeks it's three hours and ten minutes. I don't know. Yeah. I don't. It would be interesting what that uh, will mean. I'm sure there's a minimum amount of hours of of content that they owe Netflix every year for the right. amount of money they're getting. Um, but maybe there's flexibility in that where you can, you know, you could be a little, you can run a little short some weeks and run a little long other weeks. So um, yeah. Uh, the Cody, uh, Cody and solo yeah. and crowd chaining for Roman. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. They're waiting for it. I like Cody and solo is not a particularly compelling feud. Regardless of whether Roman people are waiting for Roman to come back, because nobody, I don't think anyone thinks that Sol Sokoa is going to be the guy who takes the belt off of Cody. So they're, yeah, they're just kind of waiting for both guys to move on to the thing, you know, to something they actually want to see them do. Um, I don't know immediately where, where Cody goes after this. Um, but in the meantime, yeah, people are just waiting for, solo to come back for Roman to come back so he they can start the the solo feud for real um maybe maybe to give Cody something to do and give yourself a month off um because after black bad blood was is there a Saudi show I feel like I've asked you this before <laughs> there's a Saudi show bad blood a Saudi show then survivor series right correct Correct. So there's some there's some time where he'll probably have to defend the belt against somebody. They did tease that Cody wanted to defend it against uh, Jacob Fatu because he, like the audience at large, sees that that's the actual star in the group. Right. Um. So maybe he moves on to feuding with with Jacob, but I wouldn't do that match unless Jacob's winning the belt. Um. Because it doesn't feel like it's time to for Jacob to be taking pin losses just yet. Yeah. 
Um, but you, you can figure out somebody for Cody to defend against for that time. And then I assume maybe we're also going to get Cody and Roman as the mega powers here pretty soon. And they're going to unite to fight off the, the evil bloodline. So, well, well it, it's war pig season as WWE kicked off uh, their annual uh, playing black Sabbath war pigs for <laughs> war games. Uh, into the dirt and see and never want to hear the song again. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I've just I figured we're getting uh, the Usos and Roman and Cody against the uh, Team U bloodline in, <laughs> yeah. inside War Games. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fine. Um, is is Hikaleo still coming in any day now? Good question. Because they theoretic it's five on five usually when they do these, right? Uh, I think they've done both. Uh, okay. I'll have to look it up. But I mean, you could always add another guy. You could put Owens or whoever with, with the baby faces and Hikaleo, or you could just keep it four on four. To your point, so sure. Um, yeah. So, I, like, I don't, I don't think SmackDown feels super compelling, but it'll be probably a hot show. Do we, do we think it's Cena is the surprise partner for Owens? Is that the? Oh, that Maybe. would make sense. I hadn't really spent any mental energy whatsoever thinking about it so i don't know i just don't know who else like why would you make it a surprise if it was just like randy orton or Sami Zayn or somebody that we see all the time yeah that makes sense um yeah they're definitely hinting at like surprises and stuff so that makes sense looking at the war games matches that wwe has done they have uh one year the women's was four on four one year the women's was five on five one year the men's was five on five, and one year the men's was five on five. So there you go. Um, if you include NXT, there have been some four on fours also for that. Yeah. So there you go. It could be whatever they want it to be. Could be any number of thousand <laughs> things. Right. All right. So uh, WWE SmackDown on USA returns this Friday from Seattle and they're building to their pay-per-view, which is coming up on October 5th in Atlanta at state farm arena, a rare domestic, not big four uh, pay-per-view for WWE. And we have a hell in a cell match for this show with punk and McIntyre. Of course, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Damian priest and Finn Balor are finally going to have a singles match after teasing uh, a split for like three years and then uh, finally splitting. And uh, Liv Morgan will put her women's world title on the line against Rhea Ripley on that show. And that's what we have for that show so far. So we have three matches. They usually only do five or six. So uh, Punk and Drew, Hell in a Cell. Pacing, pacing works for both those guys. <laughs> it might actually end up being because i don't think either guy's taking a bump off the cell uh, or off the side nobody takes a bump off the top anymore they would literally die um so it might actually be the rare modern cage match that actually takes place entirely in the cage makes sense yeah so you know will it be better than edge and finn balor's cage match um this one will probably not have like a five minute waiting period while they stitch up Finn Balor's where they stitch up one of the guys' heads. That's true. I remember that. That's that's one of the only things I remember from that Finn and Edge. Uh, hell yeah. So. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Alrighty. Um, let's see. Covered a lot of AEW stuff. We did AEW first, which we don't usually do. Mm-hmm. We covered some WWE stuff. Let's see what else is going on around the world. Anything else you want to discuss? Uh, New Japan uh, has a bunch of nothing shows until <laughs> they're building to destruction later this month where you'll get uh, Great Khan <laughs> challenging Naito for the world title. All right, great. Uh, NXT, uh, um, yeah, NXT uh, kind of loading up for their uh, debut on the CW on October 1st. They have Trick Williams and Ethan Page wrestling for the NXT championship on that show and Julio wrestling Roxanne Perez for the NXT women's championship on that show. Julia made her in-ring debut for NXT this week. Um, So they're loading up for that. Uh, uh, just 
any final thoughts before uh or anything that i missed that you want to talk about before we get out of here uh no i can't really think of anything i mean you assume title title change trick's gonna win the belt back finally i would think yeah and gives you the big splash for your for your opening your opening week and uh yeah strap the rock of the julia yeah it's time she's Makes wrestling fans horny in a very specific way. I was trying to explain this to my wife this week. Mm -hmm. I was trying to explain. It's not. Yeah. Wrestling fans are horny for her, but it's a very specific type of horny. Mm -hmm. It's 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 a it's a it's a horniness born out of fear. I feel. Well, they want her to. Punch them in the face and spit in their mouth. Mm -hmm, Right. mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we talked about that. (laughs) I'm glad we worked that out. Yeah. All right. Uh, good times, everybody. Uh, I, by the way, if you're listening, I would. I have more of a voice this week. Uh, I'm still sick. This is five weeks now today being sick. Mm-hmm. I would love to know from the audience, from the listener, what do you think I have? <laughs> I've been sick for five weeks. He is soliciting opinions from everyone except a medical professional, folks. <laughs> That's correct. What do you think I have? I think... It was either the flu that became bronchitis or the flu that became pneumonia or the or it's some COVID variant that at home tests don't pick up because it's a new variant. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. I'll never know because it, we're five <laughs> weeks in and I haven't gone to a doctor yet. But <laughs> what does everybody think I have? And uh, I'm going to see Bruce Springsteen uh, this weekend, so. Hey, that's a go. that's a life experience. Don't get Bruce sick, all right? Ugh. Look, it could be really bad. <laughs> he's like he's like seventy something, isn't he? Yes, he he is. Not only that, he has canceled this this concert once. He postponed it for a year uh, because he was sick last year. He's seventy four years old. He'll be seventy five in eleven days. God bless and uh, good luck to him. <laughs> and Oasis is getting back together. That's right. Somehow we haven't talked about this despite doing shows since then. <laughs> Oasis, uh, UK tour for sure. There's a rumored mm-hmm. US tour also to follow. Uh, 15 years to the day after they broke up, Oasis got back together. And uh, I mean, is this a, a soulless money grab? Yes. <laughs> Uh, do Is I there care? Some pride in that their <laughs> their Wembley sellout record was recently broken. Maybe so. Although they're not attempting to to uh, break Taylor Swift's new record. Uh, they they um they're going to different stadiums around the UK. They're doing like two nights at each stadium or four nights maybe at Wembley. But they're not att- apparent. Yeah. So the speculation was that was the impetus for this was. They got they heard, they saw what Taylor Swift did at Wembley Stadium and were like, well, certainly we can do better than that. <laughs> it's Hogan joining the NWO. Like that money train ain't going too far yet. We can still hop on. Right, exactly. Uh look, whatever it is, uh one of my favorite bands of all time is uh coming back after 15 years. That's that's tremendous stuff. Now, do you wait until the UK tour is over and hope that they do? Or are you are you kicking the tires on I'm not kicking the tires the on going across the pond, mainly because I have a 12 year old dog that I, I say, hate leaving. <laughs> I selfishly <laughs> ask that as a way to gauge whether or not I was about to be asked. I thought I was about to be asked to dog sit at any point in the near future. Uh, not until the U.S. tour. And the, okay, so then the rumored dates for the U.S. tour are like uh, two nights in L.A., two nights in Chicago, two nights in Boston, like two nights in New York. It's like very limited dates so i may have to travel for that at some point but uh, Mm -hmm. as of now no i'm not going across the pond for oasis but (laughs) well i've wasted your time i've wasted the listeners time let's get out of here till next time everybody i'm ethan i'm liam we'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life bye bye thanks for listening don't forget to leave us a five-star review on apple podcasts now here are this week's bonus features Tell you what, I saw a bumper sticker the other day. Uh, it was 
It's like a big work van. One of those big work vans that's so tall that it has a ladder on the back of it. Sure. So you see a bumper sticker for that. And it said, and I quote, I heart my hot wife. And I thought that was really, uh, that was really beautiful. You know, there's, there's wife guys and then there's wife guys. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a wife guy right there. Capital W, capital G. Happened to run into Phil Brooks out on the road. What do you know about that? <laughs> we have a four leg parlay with the boost. We're betting five dollars. If we win, we win twenty one sixty five. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. Uh, I'm not. I don't feel knowledgeable enough to like do do your own like you've just done. Okay, I just sure. look at the top of the thing and I just go, uh, there's okay. If I bet this one, like Tyreek Hill, 100 yards, t- two, uh, two touchdowns, Josh right. Allen's 50 yards, right? And James Cook, a touchdown. It's like, all right, I'll just bet that. You know, I'm not, I'm not bold enough to start like mixing and matching. That's fine. You know, it, it, hey, I like felt so uneducated about week one of the NFL. Like I very purposefully don't consume a lot of NFL content when it's not an NFL season. Mm-hmm. And then when the season started though, it's like, okay, well now I need to make bets and I don't know what's going on. But uh I want to eight let's see. Eight out of nine? No, anyway. Very small, very small uh wagers, but we were we had a successful week one. Great story. Everywhere. <laughs> gambling guys suck. All those gambling shows suck. Yeah. I don't I would, know why, why I'm contributing to this. <laughs> I would never consume content that involved guys talking about doing this. Yeah. But also there are there are less than 10 feelings better <laughs> in the oh. world. Oh yeah. Than really hitting on one of these, let me tell you. I think less than three. <laughs> less than three feelings. Fair. <laughs> I try to keep on keeping on.